Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Shroy, your host, and we're in luck because we're on the campus at K-State, and we're going to be talking to Dr. Jeff Whitworth, our extension entomologist, and he's got a lot to tell us about problems in sorghum, potential problems in soybeans and alfalfa. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. See you in a minute. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, and with us we have Dr. Jeff Whitworth, our extension entomologist. And he's been out and about looking at bugs and, uh, and other, other critters of that uh, ilk. And uh, Jeff, tell us a little bit about what's going on in sorghum, what to be looking for. Uh, the sorghum, uh, sugarcane aphid. Sorghum every year, you know, is, is a problem, mainly because of chinch bugs. And we have a lot of chinch bugs this year, Jim. Uh, there have been a lot in the last three or four years. I don't know why there seem to be more, but there are. And one of the problems with chinch bugs is early on, everybody knows about the problem with seedling sorghum. Right. But it also gets in this time of year, later in the season, and they'll feed around the stock and they'll weaken the stock. And lots of times you get premature lodging just because of the, the chinch bugs. Uh, in sorghum the last few years, since uh, 2014, um, we've had a new invasive aphid species called the white sugarcane aphid. We call it just a sugarcane aphid. Um, in Kansas sorghum, there are three aphid species that we've had traditionally. The yellow sugarcane aphid, the green bug, which has been a problem since the 60s or the 50s, and the corn leaf aphid. But since 2014, we've had this new invasive species called uh, the sugarcane aphid or the white sugarcane aphid. The problem with that is it seems to dominate the, sh the sorghum more than these other aphids do. Uh, in Kansas, we don't normally uh, worry about aphids later in the season. They've normally been an early season pest, but this thing doesn't overwinter in Kansas. At least it hasn't. It's a tropical or a subtropical species of aphid. Um, so it generally comes in, migrates in, or blown in by the wind later in the season, July, August. Uh, at least that's what we found the last two years. Uh, it will take over sorghum plants. The problem with this thing, it's very prolific. The, every aphid is a female. Those females produce females. Those females produce females. So those populations can just um, rapidly expand, and they have been, um, and they produce a lot of honeydew. Uh, the growers that experienced the, the sugarcane aphid last year, 2015, uh, they even had problems harvesting their sorghum because of the amount of honeydew, and it's real sticky. Uh, the nice thing with this aphid uh, that we found last year, remember we've only had one year worth of um, problems with this, so we've only had one year to work with this thing here in Kansas, uh, one of the nice things we found that beneficial insects, lady beetles, green lace wings, and the little wasps really helped. Um, so if they came in late enough, if the aphid populations came in late enough um, that the beneficial populations were already there, uh, they really helped regulate some of these populations. Uh, Jeff, I want to talk a little bit more about control of the sugarcane aphid when we get back. Folks, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. 
healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Support Kansas agriculture education with an Agritag. Agritags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. That's My Farm. It's brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. Jeff Whitworth didn't run off during the break, so I appreciate that, Jeff. Let's continue. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> well, it's not really. Uh, uh, so let's continue about the, the sugarcane aphid and some of the problems and control and confusion, maybe. Yes, like I said, there are actually now four species of aphids that apparently are going to be common in sorghum. The three that have been traditionally the green bug, the cornleaf aphid, and the yellow sugarcane aphid. Um, those are in every sorghum field throughout the state, mm -hmm. but it's the numbers. And, and, and traditionally, they don't build up in the numbers that have caused a problem. As fast. Yeah, or as fast uh, that, that as the, this sugarcane aphid, the white sugarcane aphid does. The minor exception is the green bug. The green bug gets on wheat. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a lot of green bugs in wheat early on and you don't have too many beneficials, sometimes they can get into early season sorghum. And, they used to be a real problem in the 60s and 70s, not so much anymore because we do have resistance uh, to, this, to the green bug. How do you control the sugarcane aphid? The sugarcane aphid, uh, we got a lot of questions last year. Remember last year, 2015 is the first year we had the, the numbers that justified treating. There are two different products that work really well with the sugarcane aphid and are as gentle on beneficials as an insecticide can be. Um, Savanto and what's it and transform one of the one of the common questions we got last year is if i spray my my headworm my corn earworm problem that traditionally gets in the head of the of the sorghum plant and they feed right on the marketable product they'll feed right on the kernel and they call five they cause five percent loss per head per worm okay if i spray those okay. will that take care of the aphids also uh it won't now we, we did put out some trials where we tried that. Uh, some of the growers wanted to use an insecticide that would work well on the corn earworm or the sorghum headworm, same species, whatever you were trying to kill in the head of the sorghum plant. Uh, and put in a little of the Savanto or the Transform if that would actually work to control the aphids. It does not, uh, simply because the worms are right up in the head where they're easily exposed to the insecticide. The aphids are on the underneath side of the leaves down in the canopy. So you cannot get the amount of insecticide required to get the aphids in the canopy as you can if they were up exposed on the head. So it, does, it just doesn't work out that way. Okay, so how do you get uh, those two products down low enough and underneath the leaves to, uh, to, do, good, to do a good job? Good question. Those, those, those products work really well, but you have to use a lot of carrier. You have to ah. increase the amount of carrier. Um, you know, we generally say 15 or more gallons per acre and carrier, put drop nozzles on if you can, it just depends on your setup, but you got to get the, the insecticide to where they are because, you know, that's another good question. A lot of the guys say, well, are these insecticides taken up by the plant? Are they sy systemic and, and translocating the plant? They're not. It's They're all contact, contact insecticides, so they got to contact the, the insect um, in order to get control. Well, what about the confusion between uh, uh, if they have the corn aphid there and, and they spray for that and thinking it's a sugarcane aphid? I mean, it, you, you really it, have to identify the You do. You want to make dang sure you get proper identification of the aphids. The corn leaf aphid puts out a lot of honeydew. Uh -huh. uh, they get in the head. Generally, they're a problem if they're going to be a problem when the, when the sorghum's in the whirl stage. Uh -huh. um, and they'll be in the head and they put out a lot of honeydew. Sometimes it actually retards the extension of the head. Uh -huh. But it won't be a field-wide problem. I've never seen it be a field-wide problem. I mean, in, in early to mid-August, you could go around and find um, sorghum plants that were in the whirl stage with pretty good populations of corn leaf aphids. But 
that has really helped because the beneficials are building up on these corn leaf aphids and on the yellow sugar cane aphid and the green bugs, at least that's what we found last year, so that by the time the sugar cane aphid gets here, there's pretty good populations of these beneficials which seem to help. Right. Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tallgrass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. Jeff Whitworth is still with us, and he is still the extension specialist in, in entomology. I don't know. Time's running. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff, let's, let's finish up with sorghum. There's some other critters on sorghum that we need to think about, and they move over into, into soybeans. Yes, we were talking about corn leaf aphids in the whirl. Mm -hmm. uh, well, also in the whirl, uh, you can find what they call ragworms. Mm -hmm. um, they're lepidopteran larvae. They'll, they'll turn into moths, okay? There's two different species that are mainly the culprits in Kansas, the fall armyworm or the corn earworm, um, and we're finding them both throughout the state. They rag up, that's the reason they got the name ragworm. Uh, they cause considerable concern every year because of their feeding inside the whirl, mm -hmm. and when the whirl, as that leaf grows out then, it has some pretty ragged looking uh, defoliation on it. Those are larvae. We do not recommend treating those things uh, because for two reasons. Number one, by the time that damage grows out of that whirl, the worms mostly finish feeding. Mm -hmm. So they're going to crawl down to the, the soil mm -hmm. and pupate and leave, okay? But the problem is they're not going to go away. They're just going to leave that field. And they're going to go to sorghum fields mm -hmm. that are heading out, or they're going to go to soybean fields. Um, so they, they prefer sorghum, but there's just a two-week period in sorghum when it's vulnerable to headworm damage, and that's from flowering to soft dough. I say two weeks, you know, it depends on the weather and the variety, but yeah. generally it's from, from flowering to soft dough. Where there's a kernel there. Where there's a soft kernel there so that they can feed on. Uh, the, the moth will lay an egg, those larvae will feed, you get 5% loss per worm per head. That's kind of our uh, treatment threshold, okay? The nice thing about it, they're easily controlled because they're right up there where they're vulnerable to the insecticides. So we've never had a problem controlling them. It's just you want to make sure you get out and detect the infestation early on before you've lost much grain. Then those moths will fly to soybeans. You know, the sorghum will, will become uh, past the soft dough stage, so they're looking for another place to lay eggs. And we have a lot of soybeans that are still, you know, they're indeterminate, so they're still putting pods on and setting seed. Those moths then will lay eggs in the soybeans, and those little um, larvae will feed on the seed itself mm -hmm. on the Chew soybean right pod. The pod they feed right through the pod and they feed right on the seed. Right. The reason that's important is because the bean leaf beetle adult mm -hmm. will also feed on the pod. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feed on the seed, it feeds on the pod. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have, if you're checking your field and you have a lot of seed feeding, mm -hmm. uh, you have about two weeks and that's going to go away. Mm -hmm. If you have pod feeding, those pods are going to be fed on from now till it gets cold because the adult bean leaf beetle doesn't go away. It's just going to feed on the more succulent pods as the plants set the, set the pods. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll go up the plant. They will. They, they determine. Right. They, they move up to the plant. So that's why it's important to make, like we talked about the aphids, make sure you properly identify those. Make sure you properly identify what's feeding on your soybeans um, because it makes a difference. We've got to take another break. 
Folks, stay with us. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. Jeff, let's continue our conversation on problems with soybeans. Yes, the soybeans, uh, especially the double crop soybeans, that's mainly what we're concerned about. Um, you know, every year we get questions about whether they should use an insecticide seed treatment on double crop soybeans, and sometimes uh, it's not a bad idea because uh, insecticide seed treatments will help on bean leaf beetle larvae, and they also will help against soybean aphids. Okay. Every year since 2002, we've had soybean aphids migrate into the state. We don't think they overwinter in Kansas yet. Mm -hmm. They overwinter on a tree, which is kind of strange, called buckthorn. Uh, and back in the 50s, K-State went around and planted buckthorn or provided seed for windrows for growers to plant buckthorn. So we do have a lot of overwintering hosts for this new invasive species. Sure. Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe the winters are a little bit too cold yet in Kansas for overwintering of the soybean aphid. Uh, every year since 2002, we get the soybean aphid migrating into the state. How long will insecticides uh, be effective? The insecticide seed treatments will last 21 to 28 days. Okay. I say 21, that's the low, you, you have two different rates of seed treatments. If you use the low rate, it's about 21 days. If you use the high rate, you get about another week. Okay. Uh, good question. But one of the things that confuses growers, that's from the time you put that seed in the soil until the time it germinates, just not the time it germinates. Oh, because okay. if you plant and it happens to be cool or dry, Slower to get up. yes, it doesn't germinate, your time's running on the insecticide. Fog okay. is ticking. It is. Okay. So 21 to 28 days on the insecticide activity of a seed treatment. But the, the soybean aphid, every year, it was first detected in the United States in 2000, year 2000. We got it in Kansas in 2002. Every year since then, we've had it. We've, we find it in the state. We detected it this year in early August. Um, one of the nice things, I guess you would say about the soybean aphid, they seem to be pretty well regulated by hot temperatures. So if you have temperatures over 95 degrees uh, for day, in daytime temperatures, they really don't reproduce well. They'll, that doesn't really kill them, but they don't reproduce well. So in, since 2002, we've only had two years um, in August and September where we've had to treat for soybean aphids. But every year we need to get out and monitor uh, because every year they come in. The easiest way to find soybean aphids, find ants. If you find ants in your soybean canopy, mm -hmm. you'll have aphids. Uh, a lot of products are registered for use for soybean aphids. They all work pretty well because most of the time they're up in the top part of the canopy where the insecticide will get to them. We have to take a break. Folks, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. 
Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Uh, roped and ranched all my life. And uh, a few years ago, I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder in layman's terms. It got to the point that I, I couldn't reach, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. After speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa, he finally told me that he could make my uh, shoulder better if he did surgery, but he absolutely couldn't fix it. I decided that, you know, maybe I better listen to my friend John, and, and I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I talked to Patrick Farley and was just excited about the whole aspect of going up there and having the opportunity to focus on getting better. The next morning at 8.30, went into the clinic, did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. I feel better. I, we work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here, and like any older guy does, I get pretty sore, pretty tired. But my right shoulder doesn't get sore. It's, it's like a baby's arm. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work. It is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer. With us we have extension entomologist Jeff Whitworth. Jeff, let's talk a little bit more about soybeans. Yes, uh, one of the other problems we see in soybeans are the decti stem bore. We can't manage that. I'm just alerting everybody to the fact that every year they're around and about. Uh, but also one of the questions I get are the potato leaf hoppers. Potato leaf hoppers are very common in soybeans. All during the month of August they're in soybeans. They will feed on the soybean plant. They really don't cause a problem in Kansas. They may curl the leaves a little bit, mm -hmm. but where we really worry about the potato leaf hopper is in the alfalfa. Not the soybean, um, but they not go, the soybeans. They can do they'll some they'll be damage. in they'll be in soybeans, but we don't really have to manage them in soybeans. But it's alfalfa. Um, they cause what we call hopper burn in alfalfa, and a lot of guys don't recognize that damage. Or you know, in mid to late summer. They think the alfalfa is turning yellow just because of the hot, dry conditions, mm -hmm. where if you get out and look, your pant leg or your shoes might be covered with these little green, lime green colored bugs that have a herky-jerky type movement. Mm -hmm. Those are potato leaf hoppers. Mm -hmm. And they're very common. Uh, this year, we've probably seen more than usual. In the last two years, the potato leaf hopper, it doesn't overwinter in Kansas. Mm -hmm. But the last two years, we found it clear up until the first part of November. Oh my. Uh, which I say they don't overwinter in Kansas. Maybe they're going to start, I don't know. But normally they don't, so they migrate in every year. So it hasn't been a problem late. But you know what, in, in alfalfa, we usually don't swath, what, after the first part of October so that plant can put the reserves back into the root system, right, for exactly. surviving the winter. Well, when we have potato leaf hoppers, they're feeding, sucking those reserves out, causing hopper burn in October and November. Uh, that that could the that, plant. And yes, the, that could be very problematic. And then we could have uh, slow growth in the spring, but not only exactly. winter kill, winter Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm worried about that we haven't seen before, just the last two years. And we are starting to see hopper burn clear up until the last part of October. So just, just describe that hopper burn just briefly. The hopper burns where the tip of the alfalfa leaf turns yellow and then the, as feeding progresses the whole leaf will turn yellow and go down the stem, go down the, the whole stem and can actually kill out the plant. Now are they injecting something? Yes, they are. They, they suck the juice out of the plant but also while they're feeding they inject the toxin. That's okay. what causes that's what hopper causes burn. burn. Yes, that's okay. exactly right. Jeff, thanks for taking time out to talk to us about things that are happening and going to be happening here in the next month or so. Appreciate it. Folks, thanks for being with us on this show of That's My Farm. And don't forget, next week about this same time, we're going to have another That's My Farm. See you then. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.